Welcome, everybody, to uh, Turnaround Tuesday. We're really excited that you've joined us. I want to say up front that this broadcast is pre-recorded. We have some uh, additional obligations uh, during the very time period that uh, uh, we run the Turnaround Tuesday broadcast. We tried to change them. We could not. So these folks were generous enough to join us uh, to pre-record this video so that you can be enriched by it and we can glorify the Lord together because it's turnaround time. It's turnaround time for you. It's turnaround time for your children. And I believe it's turnaround time for this nation. Amen. We are joined today by our dear friends, Chris Mitchell from Virginia Beach, Adam Schindler from Atlanta, Georgia, but he is in Washington, D.C., making history as we speak. And our, our amazing friend, apostolic leader, Garland Thomas from Tahlequah, Oklahoma. If you guys are uh, anybody in Oklahoma watching this broadcast, we are gonna be with Garland and his team on Wednesday evening, uh, the 22nd. I feel it's gonna be a, a weighty, weighty time. The 22nd Amen. was highlighted Amen. at the beginning of the year. Uh, every month, uh, the 22nd was highlighted by the Lord. I saw it in a vision. And uh, for us to be in Tahlequah with Garland on the 22nd, just the day after Turnaround Decrees is launched, we are <laughs> totally excited. So, yes. Jolene, why don't you go ahead and start us off in prayer? So, mm. Father, I just thank you just coming yeah. out of the the um father's day weekend and all the things you've done in the lives lord so many articles have been been in the paper i read so many things on drudge report and fox news about how even the media is figuring out the fatherlessness is one of the most important yes, things that yes, is affecting yes. our generations and affecting our children today so, Father, I thank you for each one of these incredible fathers that are that are on yeah. this uh, podcast with us. I thank you, Lord, that we celebrated them yesterday, but, Lord, we celebrate them every day. And, Father, we thank you that you are an amazing father that teaches us yeah. how yeah. to father this generation. Lord, come and help us father the generation and let even that be shown in the media that the articles themselves will even change, that people will begin to figure out that, that fathering has become the most important thing that it needs to be, Lord. We bless you and mm. we thank you. Turn around your children, Lord. Yes. Turn around Amen. the entire Amen. generation and turn around our nation and nations with Turnaround Tuesday, Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Amen, amen. amen. And we have a theme for this broadcast called, What's the Decree? What's the Decree? Because uh, either tomorrow, Tuesday, or uh, Thursday, the decree from the Supreme Court is going to come and it is a turnaround, a verdict of justice in favor of the right. same, right. of the children. This is an amazing moment in history. It's an amazing moment for uh, uh, the body of Christ to carry this through for, for 49 years. And I love Isaiah 49, 25. It says, I will contend with the one who contends with you and I will save your children. I want to go right to Adam Schindler, who's in Washington, D.C. right now. While we're traveling, you're, you're back in our home holding down the fort. What What's the Lord showing you? What's going on out there, Adam? Oh, well, I came in for a handful of meetings. I'm going to be doing a, uh, uh, a meeting tomorrow on this very issue. Uh, I was on the Supreme Court steps today, this afternoon. It was very empty, but they have extended the fencing out into the street so you can't even walk up on the sidewalks now in front of the supreme court and i thought it was interesting you go onto google and you touch the road closures all around the court and they say road is closed until june 27th uh which is next oh. thursday that's okay. what google that's what google says there's bugs right. flying around so 
But I prayed today and it was just this sense sitting there looking at out across, you know, the, I don't know what street it is, the one that runs right down into the Capitol and you look over to your right um, on the on the clerk side of the court and just was getting a sense that we pray and we push. There's this final little piece of opposition, right? Everything has been probably written and done. <laughs> And there is now the preparation for the manifestation of violence on the outside. You have to protect violence done to the body with violence done on the outside. And so I just sat there and prayed and I just, I just wanted to create a, um, an end to the violence. We did some of this when a lot of the Black Lives Matter stuff was pressing in on Lafayette Square after that night of the burning of the church. And we prayed and the body of Christ responded and it kept the violence. And so I do think that we just need to decree over our nation. Um, whenever yeah. this decree comes out, maybe it's already come out when you're watching this. But we just want to pray. Can I do that real quick? Sure. Living God, we thank you, God, that you are the author yeah. of peace, yeah. Father, yeah. and that you are the guardian God of justice. And that your yeah. righteousness mm -hmm. is going out. A new plumb line of righteousness has been dropped in this nation as it relates to life. <laughs> there is a restoration and a turning of hearts to the fathers and the sons back to the fathers. Father, but we pray right now, God, for whenever this is, whether it's just happened, Father, whether it's coming, we pray, God, that there would be a guardianship in the spirit over the spiritual realities that are all stirred up right now. We decree and declare in Jesus' name that the Supreme Court and the areas on Capitol Hill and all these manifestations of violence that are being planned by activist groups to take that violence to the streets. Father, we call for that to be canceled right now in Jesus' name. Yes, yes. Father, we pray right now for a loosing yeah. of the spirit of peace. God, to go into these places to protect homes and businesses, to protect the justices, to protect the families that are running the pregnancy resource centers. Yeah. Father, we thank yeah. you, God, that these men and these women are unafraid, that they are bold. Father, but we also thank you, God, for a guardianship over the life and the property of all of these places, God. As the laws shift and the earth lines up with what heaven says, we just declare peace on the earth and goodwill towards men over the next couple of weeks, whenever this verdict comes out in Jesus name, we ask these things. Yeah. And Adam, I want to add to that. Uh, the Lord highlighted the scripture, Isaiah 54, 10, right on. he will give us rest and contentment in his covenant of peace. And yeah. he goes on to explain wow. about the, the peace we will have in heaven. That's what the rest of the scripture is. But he's talking about the covenant of peace that we can live on the earth with. And I just decree that decree that mm. we will have rest and contentment in a covenant of peace. Our ministries are all about the covenant. We believe totally in the covenant mm -hmm. and the covenant we right, have with right. God. One of those covenants right. is mm -hmm. a covenant of peace. So I just declare that over Washington, DC. I declare that over every ministry. I declare that over every place that the enemy would wanna yes. target right now. We declare yep. the covenant of peace and rest that we have with the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. Amen. Mm. Amen. And, mm. I want to keep praying. Father, we just pray right now. I'm just hearing this word optics. You know, that's a very politically loaded word. Like they, people just care about the optics and what it looks like. But I just Whoa. want to pray in Jesus' name that the optics of the day and the week that follows the 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 realigning with our nation with truth and justice in the constitution that the optics at the supreme court would be an optics of emptiness that there wouldn't be mass protests that there wouldn't be mass violence or riots that it would that it would be a, a an optical presentation of what Jolene just prayed that there would be a covenant of peace that gets established. And John and Jolene, you guys have said this so often that we're moving from a covenant of death, empowering a culture of death, to a covenant of life, empowering wow. a culture of life. And we just claim the culture of peace right now, a covenant of peace Amen. over the optics of the Supreme Court, God. And we ask for and we cancel any demonic assignment against that particular piece of territory over the next couple of weeks. Yeah. And we pray for peace 
and openness and an optics of acceptance and release of the peace of God into our nation. That peace is released into our nation. No longer death and violence in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. Yeah. And we declare the restraining of the forces of darkness that would try to spark uh, this chaos and this uh, this violence mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. Yes. We thank you, Lord, that the unjust bloodshed is being met by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Father God, that this uh, uh, oppressive force of violence that's being sent against uh, uh, the the, even the Supreme Court justices, I'll just put it that way. I thank you that that is being restrained and we shift into life. The shalom, we shift into your yes. covenant yes. strength. You guys go yes. ahead and pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Well, we want to decree and agree that the thing I saw while you guys were praying was this, that God's ability and we know that his government rules over all but what i want to decree is that 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 governing ability that we set under that covenantal agreement we have that what happens is that they what they are doing is so exposed and so backfires on them right on that what they design for it to be is in some way to prove their point which is I think after the Supreme Court brings out the right decision, their point is a mute point anyway, right? Because the law has been adjusted and changed. And right. that that the ability for them to fight back and push back is pushed down or squelched down by the presence and the power and the answers of what we are praying and what we are decreeing that it begins to push back against them in the spirit realm they'll not know you know many times we have prayed and and watch god in his power and in his ability literally shut the voice down of evil people and just shut them down so they have no effect and even as adam said you know one thing that they are after they're after optics they want to put on a good show they want to have something on the the media scattered across the news, but we're saying that is going to fail. That yeah. is not going to happen. Yeah. And so whatever they're trying to do, wherever they're trying to do it, I just decree the presence and power of Holy Spirit, the angels of God, we call yeah. them forward yeah. to assignment, to assignment to these places to watch over, of course, our justices, yeah. but to push yeah. back against the evil mm. and and steal the voice. It'll be like what I see is their lips are moving, but nobody's listening. That God is going to just cut off the voice, the effect. Maybe what I'm seeing is the effect of their voice or even their actions. They will be doing these things, but it'll not have the desired effect. We decree mm. that it falls flat in front of them and the the, the ability of God and his covenant people to push back in the spirit will be seen. We will see it and we will know what's happening, but they won't. We just yeah. agree that's being done and will be done these next days. They've said they're going to give us a summer of, you know, awful hell and the worst summer we've ever had of violence. Well, I just decree that will not happen. That will not be effective. That will be shut down because once it's done, what can they do about it? So I just decree that in Jesus name. Yeah, yeah. I just want to I want to go, go ahead, ahead John. Yeah, I just yeah. wanted to jump in because as Garland was uh, <clears throat> was speaking, what I was seeing even Jolene earlier as you were praying into this, I was seeing uh, Genesis 1 2 where the scene at creation when we're looking at the narrative, <laughs> Uh, it, it speaks about the earth being in chaos and confusion. Mm -hmm. And we see in, in the next verse that the Holy Spirit, the presence of Holy Spirit Come is on. brooding yeah. upon yeah. the face of the of yeah. the waters. <laughs> and so before there is a release, there was yeah. a release of the voice of the Lord in, in verse four that calls the order into, excuse me, the chaos into order. Yeah. There's yep. the brooding of Holy Spirit. 
And so we want to decree right now the brooding presence of Holy Spirit over the Supreme Court, over the justices, over Washington, D.C. We say, Holy Spirit, brood upon this covenantal uh, release Mm. of restoration to order and original intent. We decree that your presence covers and broods as this word is released that will establish order out of chaos. So as they're planning a summer of chaos and confusion uh, for for the sake of optics, as you mentioned, Adam, we decree that the brooding presence of Holy Spirit uh, as a as a means of bringing forth the edict of the king to establish his order and to establish his justice in our land in Jesus name. Amen. I agree. I want to jump in on that real quick because just the optics of this would be so ironic. I would even go so far as to call it absolutely 100 percent hypocritical if the same people who are sitting up grandstanding over January 6th and the uh, the Capitol storm are actually inciting uh, violence against the Supreme Court justices over a, a righteous oh, yeah. verdict. Yeah. There's no way the Constitution in any way guarantees the right to an abortion. Uh, our Declaration of Independence, upon which our nation was founded even before the Constitution, declares uh, uh, that uh, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. They are created. They're yeah. not just yeah. birth. They are life begins at creation, not right. birth. They are created yes. equal and endowed with certain unalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, which means that for the beings that are created, again, it says nothing about birth. It's talking about creation. For the beings that the human beings that are created, they are appointed for life. Amen. And for us to rob children of life it's not only horrendous and horrific in the eyes of god but it is also uh uh, absolutely hypocrisy against the foundational uh uh covenants that our founders made to establish our nation and the imagery of wow if you go through with this then we're just gonna bring violence all across the land as the the Congress has gathered with this very hypocritical gathering, uh, you know, trying to take down President Trump, who's, you know, I am as a big threat, whatever. But the fact of the matter remains that they are accusing uh, conservatives of inciting violence when actually they're the ones that have been inciting violence this whole time throughout 2020 on into this present hour and not only inciting violence but uh they refuse to add additional protection Mm -hmm. to to add additional protection for the supreme court justices yeah i mean it's one branch of the government saying well that branch doesn't need the level of protection that is afforded to us yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah, and i want to go back to um when we were talking about the presence of God hovering over it, what I heard was Psalm 16, 6. And it says, the boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely we have a delightful inheritance. And I just, what I saw is the Lord putting boundary lines around it. And that we can decree and we can declare in the spirit realm that the boundary lines around the Supreme Court are the Lords and they're the Lords by covenant, mm. that that covenant of peace rules and reigns there, and that yes. the boundary lines yes. of yes. that area belong mm-hmm. to the Lord yes. Jesus Christ. And it mm. says that is our delightful heritage. So we just mm. in the spirit realm draw a line around that whole neighborhood, yes. around even, even the places they've tried to block us out of. We decree angels. Yes, yes. Inhabit that very place. The mm-hmm. boundary lines can keep us as human beings out, but it cannot keep the angelic forces out. And I declare in the name of Jesus that that is our. 
godly inheritance and that boundary line belongs to us as the body of Christ and belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I, I decree the blood of the Lord yes. over the, an angelic activity at its height. We send angelic forces behind yes, yes. barriers, behind those walls, and mm -hmm. we decree and declare that those boundary lines are ours in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. That was the most noticeable thing, Jolene, of being there today was the moving of the fences, and they literally moved it out. And if you can picture the court, it's it's the street and it's the curb. It's the boundary markers around the entire court. Mm -hmm. That whole side, if you're standing at the court looking to the left, all the gardens and everything all the way out to the heart building. They literally put the fences and you have to walk in the street. You can't touch the sidewalk of the court all the way around. So they literally marked out the boundaries of the entire property, not just mm -hmm. keeping people from coming up the steps. <laughs> Yes. You know, and, and I felt just <laughs> such a strong call to pray a release of angelic guardianship yes. over all that stuff Amen. Uh, today. And so this, this is exactly, and I just, I'm just, I'm, I'm laughing to myself about the optics of an, a, a bunch of fences with nobody there, just a big <laughs> empty <laughs> fence, right? I mean, it's one thing to have an empty court. It's another thing to have a giant yes. fence with nobody there. Right? Right. We were, we were preparing for violence but it never mm -hmm. came. Why? It's been defeated. Amen. Amen. Well, it has been defeated. Really, you, you could say it's been defeated even on the cross, right? Through the blood right. of Jesus, yeah. that that force of evil has been uh, defeated. But what we are doing as a nation right now is coming into alignment with the providential directive that ensures these restraining forces from the Lord are released. We abdicate our protection so often because we violate the very boundaries that God set up. He right. set these boundaries up for our protection, for our good. And as we return, you know, I look at Acts 319, repent and return so that your sins will be washed away. That's that's what we need as a nation right now, for our sins to be washed away. Amen. We need to wash Amen. Washington with the blood of Jesus that atones for our sins yes. and puts a yes. barrier yes. between what was and what can now be. And, and repent and return so that your sins are washed away and that times of refreshing may come. From the refreshing. I believe that this is a, a, uh, a directive from the Lord, from heaven's court, that, that the highest court has come into agreement with. Mm -hmm. And I believe that the Lord is going to move in power mm -hmm. as we have repented, as we have returned. One of the primary meanings of uh, turnaround Hebraically is, is repentance, teshuva. Mm -hmm. It literally mm -hmm. means to turn around in repentance. So I believe that it's going to unlock the, the blessing of the Lord over this land. Amen. I don't any coincidence. We have Father's Day celebrating Father's Day. We have Juneteenth celebrating freedom. And now we're coming into uh, a, another holy day, a day that is going to be celebrated in heaven and earth when mm -hmm. this covenant with death and hell is finally eradicated from our national Amen. Amen. laws. Yes. Uh, John, while you guys were praying and talking, I, uh, I see things all the time. I guess that's what makes me a seer. So what I saw, <laughs> was, do it. what I saw was this, and I'll, I'll, I'll do it with my hands. I saw the hovering coming down out of the third heaven. Wow. Yep. And it came through the second heaven yeah. and down to where we are. And what happened was, they all got this confused look on their faces because the hovering cut off the communications to the second heaven where the enemy likes to run in the airways. And it's like this hovering kept coming lower and lower to where it was coming down. The presence of Holy Spirit, wow, was coming so strong that they could not communicate to the evil forces that are swirling around DC 
are swirling around our land that God says, I am the one way I'm going to shut their voices down is I'm going to cut off their communications. Amen. And I think we'll literally see some of that happening. Go ahead and decree that. Make that the turnaround right. decree. So we make this decree now, Lord, that the communication lines are being cut as we agree together in this time, this turnaround time over this video, which will be released tomorrow. Father, we decree and others will join us that we make this turnaround decree that communications as Holy Spirit, the presence of God comes to set down upon yeah. our land wow. and upon DC and upon that whole area there, Father, that we decree communication lines are cut off. Their voices, you, you see their mouth moving, but they don't have any impact because the communication connection to the evil world is shut down. We decree that will be happening. So there's no effect that agree. can take place out of their voices, out of their mouths, that the presence of God agreeing with what we are praying and decreeing, it'll happen that way. Communications are cut off in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And Father, we send we send that very hovering over each of the Supreme Court justices as well. Yes, yes. We set that boundary line around each one of their homes, each one of their families. Yes, and we yes. cover them with the blood of Jesus. Father, we extend those boundaries. We extend the hovering. We yes, yes, yes. Extend yes. the angelic mm. around their families for supernatural Thank protection. Thank you, Lord. We Thank you, Lord. Decree and declare from yes. the government of God a supernatural protective order around each one of those those justices around their decisions yes. that there will yes. be no targeting of them and that the blood of Jesus will supernaturally protect and cover them and their yes. families yes. in every decision that they made, Lord Jesus, that lines up with your will and with your throne is now an edict in the with the government of God behind it, the supreme court yes and the supreme yes supreme yes. judge sovereign lord has dictated it in the name of jesus amen amen Good. i just want to decree this that you know as as we've been praying into this i keep hearing proverbs twenty two twenty eight that says do not remove the ancient landmarks uh, yes, landmarks sir. that your fathers have set and really when we look at the opinion that that uh uh, we've seen from uh, penned by Justice Alito, uh, he basically goes through and outlines the reality that what we've seen happen is that we literally moved the boundary line set by our forefathers. Right. And, right. and and that's what we've seen happen. This is this is it is no place in our constitution. It's no place in our history as a nation. And so what we saw happen was the moving of the boundary line set by our forefathers. But I just hear the Lord saying, and I want to decree that there is a reset of the ancient yes, landmarks sir. where you and even uh, as they have set these yes, boundaries yes. outside of the Supreme Court that that uh, that Adam was referring to, where they've stretched the boundaries out. Lord, we just thank you that there's a return to the mm -hmm. to original intent to the boundary lines that you've mm -hmm. set for this nation, back yes, to the boundaries yes. and the landmarks of our forefathers that releases yep. justice that speaks to liberty, that speaks to life. We just thank you for the resetting of the ancient landmarks, Lord, today. We yes. decree it so yes. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And Father, we just agree with the Jubilee year, God, that calls mm -hmm. for a restoration of the land back to its original owners. And we just declare in Jesus' name that this Jubilee year, this 49 years, God, that we are getting restored back to the original intent back to the original claim and we just thank you god yeah. for this jubilee reset in this nation the enemy's trying a great reset but jesus you are releasing a jubilee reset to restore and reset and reignite wow wow yes. yes it's like the lord's wow. restoring the ancient boundaries not so that we can sit back 
and enjoy the ancient boundaries so that we can get busy building up the thing that was supposed to be there in the first That's place. Exactly right. All Amen. right. We're not going okay. back so that we can stay back. We're going back to build the life that should have been built in this nation. Yes. So, Father, we thank you, God, that where the judicial branch had been a legislative branch in 49 years ago, it is now being a judicial branch. So the legislative branch can legislate. So, Father, we right. declare wow. that you would move yeah. this sp the spiritual weight and activism, God, that has rested. There's been a spiritual weight of glory that has rested on the intercession to end Roe versus Wade. And that weight of the glory is moving into the legislative process. The Lord's glory wow. is moving into wow. the legislative process because Come it's on. now where it's supposed to be. And it's not going to be a set of nine justices that activist courts declare over a whole nation. It is 50 states with two upper houses and a lower, an upper and a lower house. It's all of the tens of thousands of state representatives around the nation that are yeah. going to get to work. So, Father, we thank you, God, that the weight of your glory is moving to the legislative mm. bodies in the states. God, that that mm. glory that has been congregated in the highest court in the land is now dispersing out into the earth, almost like it's a diaspora of the spirit of the glory of God over this issue of life in the nation. Just disperse it out into the nations around state legislators and groups and activists, intercessors, pregnancy resource centers, adoption mm. agencies, all around God. Yeah, Reverse your yeah. glory out of this central temple and put Come it out on. on your disciples, Jesus, <laughs> everywhere, God. Send oh, that glory yeah. out into the nation Hallelujah. in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, this opens up the door for restoration as you have, have, have prayed mm -hmm. and declared, Adam, even within government. We declare, mm -hmm. Father God, that as we have made a choice as a nation, uh, as as uh, the Supreme Court justices have made a choice to overthrow this cruelty of unjust bloodshed that has brought trauma into the lives of so many, uh, and and has has uh, robbed precious children of life, uh, and robbed our nation of destiny. We are yes. asking yes. that you release at this time take down the shebnas in Jesus' name. According to 22, those that are using their own platforms for their own gain or for the gain of the party alone instead of uh, for the betterment of the nation and the citizens of this nation, take down the Shebnas and establish your Eliakim, Father God. Declare the release of keys of recovery, Lord, that you are giving to those that have stood for your heart and stood for your covenant purposes who have been bold in the face of the injustice and the lies and deception that has been perpetuated uh, even by media, you are giving them keys of restoration right now. Yeah. Give your Eliakim. Eliakim's yes. qualification yes. was that he was a father to the house and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, to the nation and to the capital city. Give your Eliakims the covenant keys, the keys of restoration to restore government to restore the godly boundaries within the three branches of government and yeah. to restore this constitutional expression that our fathers dreamed of as a means of perpetuating liberty from generation to generation to generation. Ooh. We ask for this. We require right. it in Jesus' right. name. Amen. Ooh. That's awesome. Ooh. Wow. I'm, <laughs> I'm hearing something. It's going in a little bit of a different direction. So if somebody's got something here, you want to. I want to add something to what uh, Adam, while you were, uh, you were decreeing, I saw something again and I saw this. You had a few voices coming out of DC. God says, I am moving my voice into the States and the voices will be, begin to come out of the 50 States. And so then what I saw was this release in the 50 states that they have been looking for, that they've been longing for, that they have some, I want to say it this way, I don't know if it's the right word or not, some power base back, given back to the states where they'll become bolder and and louder to, to let the states take their proper place the way it was supposed to be as it was written in the Constitution. Those little voices of a few judges or a few people in D.C. 
I see that because of Roe versus Wade, I see this movement beginning to, to release a power of voice back to the states. And I saw yep. that, Adam, while you were, you were decreeing and praying. Well, that was, I know the sirens are going off behind me. I don't know if you can, sorry for the distraction, but that, that was exactly what I was hearing. Um, because I was hearing about weighted scales. Mm. Yes, sir. The whole idea of justice having weighted scales and they're not, right, I mean, yeah. the whole idea of scales is that they're not weighted. Right. right but right. in, in Israel, there was a designated group of people in the nation of Israel that were over and in charge of making sure that all the scales mm -hmm. were weighted properly. Right. right. And it was the Levites. Mm -hmm. It was the priestly class that were in charge of making sure the scales were weighted properly. Mm -hmm. And that was connected for me in this moment about what Neil Gorsuch was arguing in his book, A Republic, If You Can Keep It. He says that um, in the book, he makes a very compelling case that this idea that the United States government was set up with three separate but co-equal branches of government is a myth. That mm. it, they, were, they were not co-equal. That the legislative process is by far the most robust because it takes all of these hundreds and hundreds of different people with the representative right. bodies around the right. nation. That they are the, they are the preeminent body in the nation because they make the laws. And then a vigorous enforcement of the laws from the executive branch and, and then an interpretation of what the laws are by the judicial. And so I was just hearing this is that we have had for 49 years when it relates to life, we have had a weighted scale that has given the courts more authority yep. than was in the Constitution and more yep. authority than the individuals. And everybody's mm -hmm. felt the weighted imbalance justice scale that the courts have more weight than they ought to. Mm -hmm. And when you take the weight out of the court and you balance the scales, what does that do? but put the power back in the hands of the people, the legislative yeah. process. Yeah, and maybe so much of the withdrawing of the church from the legislative process has been because we've had these imbalanced scales. We thought, mm -hmm. why vote if nine justices can change the law? Yeah. But I just really, I'm really hearing the Lord is mm -hmm. sending his glory back on the legislative process. And that means the re-empowering of state legislators mm -hmm. and then everyone that is involved. You know, because 14 people can change a state legislator's mind. How mm -hmm. many people would it take to change Nancy Pelosi's mind? You know, millions. I mean, zero. That like it never go. happened. <laughs> <laughs> right. She can't yeah, even get her husband to stop drinking and driving. <laughs> <laughs> no. So anyway, we thank you, Jesus, that you are balancing the scales, Father. You are yes, taking sir. out yeah. the illegitimate yes. weights, yeah. the measurements, yeah. Yeah. the legislative imbalance that the courts put into the scales of justice. Father, we thank you for even clear scales. Father, we don't have the outcomes in the legislative process that we need. But God, we've got a chance to actually do that with a fair weighted scale. So we thank you, Jesus. And we yeah. declare even measurements, even measurements in this nation as it relates to life, yes. even measurements in the scale of justice in Jesus. Yes, name. yes, I agree. I agree. Yeah, I don't think it was any coincidence that the second Passover this year was demarcated by a blood moon. <laughs> mm -hmm. You the, the blood moon and with the constellations, it was the scale of justice, the blood moon. I think the Lord is making a very strong point that uh, he, he is releasing this. And the blood moon is all about, uh, it's a warning, a call to repentance biblically, but it's repentance that leads to an outpouring of the Holy Spirit and a restoration of original Ooh. intent. So Amen. we really want to see this. We're in a let my people go moment. It is the second Passover. We were celebrating the second Passover and I believe we're in a season of Passover. And with that season of the Passover, it's really important to understand why God finally tipped the scales in favor of the saints uh, and, mm. and, and rendered his verdict of justice in favor of the saints. The reason why he did was um, what came in point anyway was when Pharaoh mandated that the firstborn of all Israel be cast into yeah. the Nile. It was abortion. It was an abortion of life the lives of the firstborn of, of all Israel. 
And at that point, he decided to raise up Moses and the Moses movement was a let my people go movement as it was then, it is yeah. now. Those Pharaoh expressions, the people who build their places of uh, seats of authority in covenant with demonic powers, uh, uh, willing even to shed unjust blood uh, in order to perpetuate their rulership. Uh, you know what? Your time is up. You have been weighed in the balance and found wanting. And God has numbered the days of your rulership and brought it to an end. Come I can on. say that with full assurance that this process has culminated because um, in, in 2019, I had a prophetic ex while in the U.S. Capitol. Chris, you were there with, with uh, me. Jolene, you were there with me where I literally saw a hand out of uh, 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 an interior wall of the Capitol and the gavel came down. And as mm -hmm. the gavel came down, the Capitol shook, mm -hmm. which said covenant with death annulled. And I knew that what the Lord was saying in that is that just as, as Daniel saw a hand come out of the wall and wrote many, many Tekalu Parson, you've been weighed in the balance and found wanting. God has numbered your days of rulership and brought it to an end. Mm -hmm. That is exactly what I saw happening. That's why the hand came. And that's why the gavel mm -hmm. fell for right. life. And we are seeing the manifestation of this in a profound way right now. So we want to encourage everyone who is in any position of rulership, choose life, choose to be a father and a mother to the next generation, mm -hmm. choose to use your platform to empower to fulfill their destiny. If give, give that expression, give your heart uh, uh, to that expression. You're going to find yourself being promoted in this season. And we're going to see a lot of exposure of those who have only used their platforms for unjust the expense of the people. Amen. Amen. Yeah, even during this broadcast, the Lord brought back to me about 12 years ago when uh, we moved in for a short period of time. We lived on Capitol Hill. And I woke up one morning, I heard the Lord say, who's going to be king of the hill? He says, I am playing king of the hill and I'm going to push them off the hill because <laughs> I am on. the true king. Yes, yes. He gave me the scripture and he said, this is my holy hill in which I am king. So I'm just going to declare Psalm 24, 3 to 4. Mm -hmm. Who Come shall <laughs> ascend into the hill of the Lord? Mm -hmm. For who shall stand in holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted yes, up yes. his soul unto an idol, nor sworn deceitfully. And when we talk about being weighed in the balance, that's what the Lord's looking for. That is what he weighs. He weighs the cleanness of our hands. Do we have blood Amen. on our hands Amen. or are our hands clean? He weighs the cleanness and the purity of our heart. He weighs how we put our soul unto all the idols that we lift up our soul. And have we sworn deceitfully? That's the mm. most important thing. There is so much and swearing of deceit going on. And I feel like the Lord is saying to me, I had that experience 12 years ago, but the Lord is saying, I'm going to prove right now who is king of the hill. I'm going mm. to take my right. hill and I am yeah. going to be yeah. the king. And I am going to make it the holy hill of the Lord. And Come we on. all pray into agreement of that in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 He is our king. He is our lawgiver. He is our judge. And he will save yes. us. We just yes. declare the salvation of the yes. Lord coming forth. And I thank you that you literally are retaking the hill, Jesus. We Amen. love you that you're taking yes. your seat Amen. enthroned over Capitol Hill, yes. over Supreme Court, and over the U.S. Mm -hmm. Capitol, over Congress, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, John, it's 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 interesting. You were talking about the experience you had over um, at the Capitol building, and I remember during that same time period, I wrote about it, uh, wrote a post about it in 2019. I actually got 
loss, turned around, accidentally walked into right outside of the chambers where the Supreme Courts meet, uh, the Supreme Court meets. I walked into the hallway. I turned and as you the pillars that are in the hallway, I turned and as I looked towards the pillars, I saw a set of scales, uh, a huge set of scales, but they were un, they were not balanced. And all of a sudden, as I was watching, I saw the scales violently, violently pulled back into uh, into uh. balance. And and this was in 2019. And now as as we're speaking about this today, I believe just as what you said, Jolene, that the Lord is establishing any time there is a disruption of covenant or we, we depart from covenantal principles, the glory follows. So there, we're, and John, as you've said many times, where there is no covenant, there is no glory. Right. And the moment, the moment of you, you see that in first Samuel chapter six, when the Ark of the Covenant is taken from Israel and Ichabod is, de is, is declared because the covenant has been taken, the glory followed. Mm -hmm. And there's so many examples that I can cite on this, but what I see happening, Adam, you prayed into this prophetically earlier, Garland, I believe you said it too, that there's a glory that is returning. That as, yeah. as as this as yeah. these scales are being balanced as this un, as the the uh, the improperly weighted scales that have been behind the scenes uh, manipulated by men who have taken oaths and vows pledged to one another pledges of deceit and on, corruption to Come try on, to Chris. push forward their yeah. own will yeah. and to leverage justice in this nation to tilt it towards their own means and to uh, support their own agendas. But as the Lord is, I, I, as I saw those, those scales were violently tipped back into place that this thing uh, that God is doing is going to restore a glory uh, is coming out of this. There's going to be a movement of glory, even in our systems of justice. I just decree right yeah. now that this yeah. uh, this yeah. this unjust weighting of the scales of justice that have been leveraged to control, to bring uh, death, to, to disrupt the foundation of this nation, we decree, Lord, that the glory is returning. We decree, yes. we decree, Lord, through the channels of justice, through the halls of justice, that the glory of the Lord is returning. And we speak this now in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. 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 And guys, Amen. that's from state to state as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to see the glory restored from state to state. And we've seen the glory at a distance. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Jolene and I have traveled throughout Washington state. Um, we, we've traveled this just recently, California, at least, to, you know, um, get an overall view of California, uh, Las Vegas, Colorado, just within the past few weeks. And it's astounding when you're in the air and you look down and you see the drought that everybody's yes, talking sir. about, the worst drought in thousands and thousands of years. The, there's very clear biblical principles that if we forsake God's covenant, he will restrain, he will lift his glory, and he will lift his blessing. And mm -hmm. uh, you can see it again and again um, where, where the people of God sinned against the Lord intentionally. They, 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 they pushed Adam and, and, and sinned against him, and the Lord withheld mm -hmm. the rain. And then they repented, and the rain was restored. I'm telling you, God is using very, very clear biblical means to send biblical messages calling entire states to turn from their wicked ways. Yes, I believe And the it. crisis is only getting bigger on a national mm -hmm. level and on a state-by-state -state level, especially for these states that are not in alignment. Now, um, we saw Virginia turn, didn't we, Chris? Yes, we mm -hmm. did. In a pretty remarkable way. We've seen Oklahoma turn. And Garland, could you tell us just a little bit, as you're the state leader for uh, Oklahoma, for the Heartland Apostolic Prayer Network, you lead the, the OAPN. Can you tell us just a little bit of what the Lord's been doing in Oklahoma and the, the blessing that you've seen as a result? Well, one of the things that I thought about, and you, you'll see this kind of comically, because uh, when you were saying that, I saw it that way, all the dry 
And then I was just going to say, just drive into Oklahoma and see the green. Yes, you sir. Know, see, see the outpouring. We just continually, and we speak over it even when we see rain coming, that we, we're, getting, we're getting an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The rain is a sign of that, the glory of God. And we continually see, and we have, you know, many places in Oklahoma where we just see the glory set down. It's just setting here. It's just resting here because uh, you, I think you guys probably know that Oklahoma is considered the open heaven state. And so in being in the open heaven state, we see God moving to where we are starting to see supernatural signs and wonders, instantaneous healings and glory coming on meetings that, you know, it's not, it's not because of who's there. It's it's because of who is there, not us, but him. Right. Amen. And Amen. it's like he comes, <laughs> he just shows up because we show up. You know what I mean? And we see this movement. And one of the things that I have found uh, in my new position is there's all kinds of prayer groups out there. I'm running across people that say, well, I'm a part of this prayer group. I'm a part of this group. God is stirring the body of Christ to rise up and to pray yes, sir. Yep. and to intercede. And I know a bunch of us been doing it for years, but these are all kinds of groups that God has stirring up the waters. And it is happening in Oklahoma. And I believe, and I heard this, I actually, I, I guess I preached about it two Sundays ago, but I, uh, I just got up and said to the people, welcome to the land of Goshen. Wow. wow. Because God woke me up in the middle of the night and said, tell your people they're living in the land of Goshen. Wow. That all of this stuff is happening around us. And these things are, and you know, and I think in some sense, we may see things get worse before they get better in the U.S. when you talk about gas and prices and all of that, thanks to our leadership. Uh, but uh, you know what? I heard God say plainly that to his people, he said, I'm going to, I'm going to take my people. And even if they're in an Egypt state, okay, take Christians who are in Colorado, California, or somewhere where it looks like it's just dry, dry, dry. God says, I'm taking my people. I'm setting the spirit of Goshen on them. I'm, I'm allowing Goshen to be around them so that, the famine does not touch them, right? And everything they have, if you read the story, everything they did in Goshen prospered until Pharaoh was jealous. And he said, we got to do something with these Hebrews. Look at what's happening over there. Everything's green. They've got everything going on for them, you know? Uh, well, I think there's a time coming where we're going to see that happen yes, over sir. and over across the United States. And so I say that for the people who will who will listen to this and watch this. Come on. Whatever state you're in, why don't you believe that where you are, Goshen could be released there? That God's presence and power and glory and supply could be there where you are. And then that will be the testimony to the unbelievers and the naysayers that say, well, I don't know anything about that those people, you know, they're decreeing things and they're always talking about covenant. And, and I'm talking about church people, the Pharisees who look at us and say, you guys are nuts. No, they're going to find out that we have a connection that causes the glory to come down. Hallelujah. The glory comes down and Goshen is manifested where we live and where we operate and where we go. And I believe that happens. You guys travel a lot more than I do, but I believe you carry that anointing of, of uh, if I can say it this way, of releasing the, the spirit of Goshen, of supply, of the glory of God, of people saying, well, how come they got that? How come, you know, look at them. They're prospering. What's going on? Well, because the glory is there, and we see that happening in Oklahoma. All over. <laughs> all over. That's totally amazing, Garland. I keep having a picture of uh, of people's grass being green on one lawn 
and and not and totally dark and brittle on the other. Mm -hmm. I keep having that. And right. the Lord just spoke to me. The grass is greener on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. I just yes. hear that over everyone that you will live in the land of Goshen and the Woo! grass will be greener. There Come will on. be a Come blessing on. over your home. There will be a a noticeable yeah. blessing that mm -hmm. people cannot. Mm -hmm. The Lord spoke to me once that it's going to be undeniably Jesus, that we're going to begin to see things that yes, are undeniably yes. Jesus. And I decree and declare that Goshen will be over your land and the grass Glory. will be greener on your side than on others. And it will be evident to all who see that the Lord's blessing is on your house. It doesn't matter how much inflation gets or gas prices get, or the Lord Amen. will come and provide at the level of deception and the level of deceit and the level of corruption in the government will make no difference to your household wow. because the Lord will provide oh, to that very level in the name of Jesus. Yes, man. We agree. Have a good day. Yeah. <laughs> Can I say one thing about Goshen? Sure. I got to pick this up. Um, in Exodus, after the fourth plague, that's when there's a distinction made with Goshen. The fourth plague is the plague of flies or scarabs or beetles. Who is the Lord of the flies? His name was Baal. Yes. Baal yeah, God, come on. Baal yeah. is master. And that day, the first three plagues happened to all of Israel. The economic shaking, the shaking with life, and the breathing of life into the dust that made the Egyptians go, that's the finger of God. But when they get to the fourth plague, the issue of lordship, that's when God says this. On that oh, day, Lord says the Adam. Lord, I will wow. make a distinction between my people yes. and yes. Egypt. That word distinction means to separate, to, to separate, divide out. And then he says, and on that day, when he talks about what he was going to do in Goshen, this plague will not come against them. And it says there that, that he distinguished Goshen. That word distinguished is the Hebrew word ransom. So uh -huh. what is Goshen? It is a set apart place where God ransoms the land for his glory. Hallelujah. So if you're wondering wow. if you can be a land of Goshen yourself, are you a set apart person who God has ransomed yes. for his glory yes. at the yes. point of lordship? <laughs> wow. you, don't get to be, you don't get to be a Goshen unless you have Jesus as Lord. But when you have Jesus as Lord, you settle mm. this issue of lordship. We have economic shaking, shakings around life, and everybody dies and needs the breath of life breathed into the dust of the earth. But when you are a child under the lordship of Jesus, you are a land of Goshen. You've entered Amen. his rest. So we thank you, God, that the church is a land of Goshen. Father, and where the children of God go, we are a land of Goshen. We thank you, God, that Oklahoma is an entire state full of lands of Goshen. <laughs> Father, yes. we do bless you, Father. And I yeah, just pray, God, that you would release an increased fervent desire in your church to have you as their yeah. Lord. Yes. God, yeah. that we wouldn't just call you the mighty God and seek your hand and not your face, but that we would receive the Lordship of the Almighty that says, you are my God, you are my King, I am following you and no other. I trust in you and no other. Yeah. And yeah. we just submit our hearts to say, we trust in you and no other. No illegitimate ruler, no, no accused theft, no economic shaking, no gas budgets, nothing but Jesus. Yeah. We say it at the Lamplighter family. What is it? No king but Jesus. No king but Jesus. You are our king and yeah. you are our Lord. And we just commit that to you again, God. Make it so in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wow. Awesome. Mm. <laughs> well, I love it. I want to take just a moment uh, as today... Uh, you're watching this beginning on uh, Turnaround Tuesday. We're, as we've stated at the beginning of the broadcast, we're broadcasting, uh, we're, we're recording this ahead of time because of obligations that uh, Jolene and I have during the period. We usually release the Turnaround Tuesday broadcast. So this is not live. Next week we'll be live, but right now uh, we're, we're having a very profound prophetic prayer time that is speaking into Turnaround Tuesday, into the Turnaround Decree that is literally setting a new course for the future 
through the Supreme Court. We're so grateful. And I want to say also, we're grateful for President Trump for nominating jurists that uh, hold the line on the constitutionality of laws. Yes. And uh, have not caved in to the unholy leveraging that many other jurists over uh, time and space eventually have yielded to. We are seeing miracles take place before our very eyes and we're very grateful for President Trump and the administration for holding the line and uh, defying the leveraging that uh, they were under in order to make this a reality. Um, I, I do want to mention uh, this book, Turnaround Decrees, is officially launched today. Uh, All right. It's going, available on Amazon. It's available from Barnes & Noble, from Target. Uh, books a million will want to uh, shop. And of course, it's available on our website. It's been available for a month on our website, uh, uh, but the official launch was designated as the 21st. So the rest of the world gets turnaround decrees now. We hey. want to encourage you to pick up turnaround decrees, buy copies for your friends. We can't keep this book on our shelf. I mean, literally, it is selling so quickly to order uh, an entire new printing very soon. So we're excited about this uh, and we're not excited. We're excited because this book is enriching people with vital truths that will that help them to uh, uh, redefine their world according to the turnaround power that's unleashed in covenant with God. Amen. And we want you to experience that power. Please get a hold of your copy of Turnaround Decrees. There. Uh, uh, we chronicle the entire Turnaround Tuesday movement in that book. Um, we share uh, where we are and where we're going. We share key prayers and key decrees that you can pray over your sons and daughters, for your sons and daughters, for their destinies to be realized. Amen. And we also have key prayers that shift, we believe, are going to nation. The Lord uh, has given great clarity to uh, many, many people uh, but ourselves included, about his dream for our future. And it's great and it's glorious. He wants us to be a city on a hill and a light to the nations. We want you to engage with us. So please pick up your copy of Turnaround Decrees and let's define the future together. Amen. Amen. Yes. So I also want to um, briefly share a prophetic word just to close us out. Uh, while we were in Colorado Springs a couple of days ago, um, I had a vision and I had a vision where uh, Jolene and I were on the top of Pikes Peak. It was night and I looked towards the east to Washington, D.C. and I saw a huge shaking, a shaking so strong that even the Washington Monument was was tilting. I looked to the west, to the northwest, and I, I saw Seattle, Washington at night. And I saw the uh, Space Needle, and the Space Needle was shaking violently as if it was going to topple as well. And uh, God gave me Hebrews 12, 26. Yes. His voice uh, uh, the earth from, from Sinai, but he's going to shake the earth again. I'm now you come and say, yet once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. He's going to shake everything that can be shaken so that uh, uh, those things which cannot be shaken may remain. And we are receiving an unshakable kingdom right now. God Amen. is sifting Amen. right now. He is <laughs> separating out the wheat from the chaff. And I'm telling you, with this shaking comes glory. We cannot deny that there is a shaking. It's not like it's going to happen. Much of it is happening right now. Yes. We are in a night season as a nation and the shaking is going on. I'm telling you, as we together, with the Lord and in Him with each other, mm -hmm. this covenant of life prevails over the covenant with death and hell that has taken, robbed so much of our heritage, so much of our destiny. Yeah. Please understand the reason why we've taken the past month and we've just hammered on this uh, um, focus on shifting into life is because we want the blessing that this life secures. 
We yeah. want our children, our babies in our arms. We want to be grandchildren, grandfathers to our grandchildren. We want to see them blessed and not mm -hmm. uh, uh, wounded or, 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 or their destinies aborted because we reap what we sow. God says, don't, don't, don't be confused. God is not mocked. Whatever a man Amen. sows, so he shall reap. And it's the same way with nations. We are shifting into a new course for the future, a course for life. So choose life, stand for life, stand Amen. against the violence the enemy is trying to empower. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's all make the turnaround decrees that define our future. Let's make them now. Let's see the Lord move, welcome him in to define our future for good and not for bad, not for challenge, not for Amen. ground. Amen. Hallelujah. Good. Awesome. Well, thank you guys. So appreciate you being here. And uh, any closing prayers, any closing thoughts? Well, I just have one. I have a book that's worth more money because it's been autographed by John and Jolene. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody wants to purchase it, I'll get another one. <laughs> I'm messing with you now. I'll yeah. pay top dollar for it, Garland. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What's your opinion of the book, though? You've read some of the pages. What's yes, what's it's it's, uh, it's really powerful. I I think it's uh, might be one of your best books. You know, I think you get better as you go along. Anyway, that's kind of the way it happens, right? <laughs> You just get more power. Like more fine wine, right? Yeah. It's like, it's better with age. Down. I like that, girl. That's right. Yeah. You just get better and better. But uh, no, it's powerful. I love the decrees that uh, they, are, they are so, you know, there. And the way it is written, it could be read and reread. And according to where a person's at in their life at that point, the book's going to speak to that in many different ways. So uh, I believe what you prayed and you stated even the beginning of the book that this book would help turn the nation. Amen. Amen. I believe that. I believe that. Well, with that, we just want to uh, say thank you, everybody. We appreciate mm -hmm. it. Chris Mitchell, great to have you with us. Adam had to get on to his next meeting in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. and Apostle Garland, we are welcome you anytime to join us. Thank so you. That, uh, you're here. We'll just uh, put the, this is how you can get uh, your copy of Turnaround Decrees. Jolene keeps whispering in my ear, put the graphic up. Put the graphic up. <laughs> oh, caption, okay. Yeah. So put please the caption uh, order your copy today of Turnaround Decrees, and uh, the Lord bless you richly. We just declare turnaround for your children, your children's children. A turnaround Amen. for life, a turnaround for God's destiny on their behalf. I will contend with the one who contends with you, and I will Amen. save Amen. your children. God is in the business of saving our kids. His hand is outstretched to do so. God bless you, and thank you for praying with us today. Amen. Love you guys. <laughs>